Our guest today is Lisa. Lisa is a business growth strategist and a fitness nutrition coach. And she spoke Japanese earlier than English. Besides, English is her mother language. Did I say it right, Lisa? Yes, that's correct. That's perfect. All right. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm also excited to talk to you finally. We could make the time and meet here together. That's great. I'm Jofia of My Processes, and I help busy entrepreneurs to automate and outsource their time-consuming tasks without sacrificing the profit. So if you are looking to make the four-hour work week a reality or just avoid burnout, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I release a new video like this. Lisa, so... You spoke Japanese first and you was born in Japan. How did it come? Uh, well, I was actually born in the United States. Um, but when I was three months old, my father was transferred to Japan for business. So at three months old, we, uh, my family moved to Japan. And we were two and a half years. And so uh, as I grew up, right? My, I had a Japanese like nanny or house lady person, and she always spoke Japanese to me. And so my first initial words were all Japanese before English. Oh. And so my, my parents always see me. Unfortunately, I don't speak any Japanese other than going to a sushi restaurant now. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that, that would have been my next question, that if you still <laughs> use Japanese, but not oh, anymore. No. That's no, but it was, it was just my initial language just because we were there in the country uh, living at the time. Okay, did you go back since then? I have not been back yet, but it is on my list. Um, okay. we, we moved all over the world uh, as I was growing up, so I've been to a lot of unique places. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's very, very lucky. So how did you start your business? Let's go back to the beginning of that story because that's why we are here right now. Absolutely. Yes. So I'd love to share. So my husband and I have actually been in business for 17 years. So as entrepreneurs were, you know, the old crowd, <laughs> we've been doing this for a while. Um, so I met my husband. My husband is a registered dietitian and I met him at a high level sport, it was the sports club. So he registered dietitian at the health, you know, fitness center. Uh, actually, it was a very high-end um, facility, and I was a member there. And um, when we met, I became a client of his. And uh, my, I actually have come from a whole other world. I had 20 years experience as a law firm administrator. I worked in law for 20 years, and. But my original dream, and originally I went to school for exercise physiology, uh, marketing, and um, uh, marketing and, and business administration. Okay, so that's I have already very, two completely different things. Completely different. So it's a very co convoluted background, but I was working in law. I had this background in health and fitness, although I wasn't ever able to get into the industry. That's it's a still a hobby story. when you met your husband. I'm sorry? If it, it, it was still a hobby when you met your Yes, husband. yes. Mm -hmm. So when, when we met, he, uh, you know, we got together and he decided he wanted to go off on his own. Um, he had developed the very first um, uh, CEU, so continuing education unit, uh, nutrition certification program in the world, the very first one back in 2003. And so we decided to, to, you know, he left his corporate job, I left my corporate job, and we started our company. And uh, I worked behind the scenes, kind of helping him get everything running. Uh, we opened up, uh, he started with a partner, and then we moved on and then opened our own facility. And um, it's been an incredible journey over these last 17 years. And we really just started from scratch with the brick and mortar, and then in 2009, um, when the economy crashed, we basically lost everything and we, we left our brick and mortar building and went entirely virtual. So we've been working virtually since 2009. So it was not a choice to work virtually? It it, well, we had a component of our business at the time that was online. So our certification program We've been certifying students worldwide since 2003. Mm -hmm. So that part of our business was already online, but it wasn't the primary component. It wasn't our primary piece of business. My husband was seeing clients. I was seeing clients in person. 
And when 2009 happened, we lost 95% of our clientele almost overnight, like within one month. Um, because our entire market was almost all in the real estate industry, uh, as far as our clients, our health and fitness clients. And so we made the, you know, we made the decision, we shut down our business, we moved everything into our home, we went entirely online, and we learned some very tough, you know, lessons along the way, and came out bigger and stronger and better. And our, the advantage of all of that, of going through that, is being able to help other entrepreneurs, to be able to work with other businesses and help them not have to recreate the wheel, like literally work three things, right? You know, into this, you know, the world that we have today with what's going on and the recession and everything. We saw this coming two years ago. We started preparing our clients for this environment two years ago. Now we didn't know did about COVID. Coming? What do you mean by so coming? So do you we so knew that the economy we knew that the economy was going to be shifting. We knew wow. that. We knew it was coming. Now, we did not know about the COVID, right? Like, nobody knew that. But we knew that, you know, business works in cycles. This is part of what we teach. Business works in cycles. And it was long overdue. And so we started preparing our clients mm -hmm. for a recession almost two years ago. And we said, look, you, we want you to be prepared to understand that business is going to be shifting again. It will be changing. And... So, so our clients are doing very well in this economy because they were prepared for it, mm -hmm. because they were prepared for it. And now our new clients coming on board, we're helping them, again, transition to be able to work more virtually because many people think of health and nutrition as being one-on-one, -on -one, right? Having to meet with them one-on-one -on -one. and we're, we're, teach, we're teaching them how to work, how to work in this new economy, how to work with clients in, no matter where they are. It's so important that you mentioned not uh, everyone knows about me, actually, but I am a digital nomad. I transitioned yeah. to be a digital nomad a year ago, more, yeah, more than a year ago. Uh, so by the time COVID hit, I was not uh, changed, I would say. Yeah. So I was like, hmm, okay, that's, that's pretty much the same. <laughs> now, do you travel quite a bit with your business or are you now in one place? Oh, that's uh, funny. So uh, my p business is not really location related and that was the intention. So when I started it, I didn't want it to be location uh, dependent I, because I myself want to travel. So I meet my clients online. I used to meet them online and I meet my uh, assistants online as well. So that was all fine for me. And yes, I do still travel a bit, but as far as COVID uh, Yes, uh, that's me to do so. But uh, my business started actually during COVID or at the merge of COVID. So that's uh, pretty much different. I don't so know it was how good timing. it like without. It was good timing. And so for, for us as well, we've been working, we've literally been working from our home office since 2009. So we did not go through a, much of a shift. It wasn't a big change for us at all, other than not being able to go out as much. But um for us, you know, we were structured, we were prepared, we were in position to be able to continue our, our work and to be able to help people and work with people. So uh, that's what I want to, you know, be able to share with your listeners today. So you can really help your clients grow into this uh, situation, what COVID caused, the economy, Absolutely. And, you know, reality. But it's also because of what you do, right? The people who do what you do, that's what makes us possible, right? Because we don't do it all ourselves. You know, we certainly don't do it all ourselves. And it's understanding that, you know, people who are experienced in doing this, right? Like, you know, I always say, let the shoemaker make the shoes. And what that saying means is, let somebody who is an expert in their area do that work. So again, I'm a, I'm a marketing, um, you know, business growth marketing strategist. I work on strategy for businesses, but is my specialty, you know, I don't want to do like the admin work, right? I want to have somebody else do my admin work. That makes more sense. It doesn't make sense for me to spend my time doing that. I need to have somebody like you, like your team who can step in and do what they do best, right? That's about be working more efficiently. Let the shoemaker do what the shoemaker does, okay? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let me have another saying, sorry, just so much rings the bell that uh, we say, and it's a little bit different, but uh, uh, so when uh, my father is a vet, 
and that's his expertise and uh, you know like all the dogs and everybody in the village was taken care by him and we also had a dog when I was a child but uh, when all of the other dogs have been treated and vaccinated in the village our dog was always the last who was taken care oh. of <laughs> he was concentrating on so much on the business part that it happened one time that my mother went to the assistant and wrote down the name of our dog that he has to come and <laughs> vaccinate our dog as well <laughs> oh, oh my goodness so oh. if you do something you tend to do uh, less than your own things and and uh, rather serve your clients that's the funny yes. part Okay, we really jumped into that. So you say that you really believe in outsourcing and, and that's great. Uh, which tasks do you outsource? You mentioned admin, which is one, I guess. Oh, well, we have different teams. So mm -hmm. I have teams that handle different things in different parts of the world. So I have, um, I have a Facebook ads team that's in Australia. Um, I love working with the Australians, by the way. I'm just saying they're amazing. Um, we have a, so that's our Facebook ads team. I have um, my, I have somebody who I work with uh, who does my LinkedIn uh, work, LinkedIn campaigns. And he's like you, he's a digital nomad. Um, he, he was based in Belarus and he and his family just moved to Turkey. So, you know, again, learning how to figure out time zones is really interesting. So he handles my LinkedIn work. Um, I have a virtual assistant in the Philippines. So my virtual assistant handles most of my admin and some of my social media. And then I actually have a social media, my, my full social media team is here in the US. So they're on the West Coast. So, so from all around the world. All around the world, which I love. Like, I, I think it's fantastic. I love connecting I with people in different parts of the world because I'm more interested in, I want to work with somebody who is great at what they do and loves what they do, right? I want, I want to, I bring, I consider them team members, right? To me, it's not, say, yeah. you know, it's not, I'm not like a, you know, this, I'm not hiring a person to just do something. I don't hire people by projects. I hire a team member because I want them to be invested in my business as well. So I want them to come to me with ideas, suggestions, right? Because they do what they do best. So my Facebook team will make suggestions to me, right? They'll say, hey, we see that you have this. We recommend you go this way. Like I want them to give me feedback, right? I consider my outsourcing and my team. And what's also great about outsourcing to freelancers, even if you want them to be in your team, but they are still freelancers. They have their own business and they have the mindset of how to run a business and they are just driven to make a business flourish. I, I really love this kind of uh, thinking, which makes a real difference between an employee and uh, an outsourcer team, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Because again, their goal is they wanna keep me as a long-term client, right? Yeah. So I'm always looking for building a relationship just as much with my team as I am with my clients, okay? I depend on my team, the people that I'm working with, and I want to have a strong relationship. I want to have a strong communication uh, with them so that they feel comfortable telling me, you know, this isn't working or this, here's what we recommend. That's, that's true, yeah. Okay, we also had a little, uh, not issue, but a little back and forth because we are also in a different time zone, me being in Hungary, middle mid Europe, and you being in the US. So we hardly found the time uh, common. And you mm -hmm. mentioned this issue with the time zones. How do you get around, uh, around with that, with your, with your team? Do you have any hack or trick? You know, that's a great question. Um, so you're gonna, this is kind of a funny answer. So I use um, Google Calendar. Okay, Google Calendar that's is my, where I manage all of our schedules. And Google Calendar actually has a section on it that you can put different time zones so on the left hand side i don't know i can't i know i don't know if you want me, i don't want to do a screen share but i have my calendar my big calendar and then on the left side of the calendar um right underneath the whole month there's time zones so oh. i have each of my team's time zones on my calendar so that i know you know where they're at and so when is the best time to communicate with them now, some of my team, they're used to, most of their clients are in the US, so they adapt some of their times a little bit more, but 
we have a pretty clear understanding of you know what time zones are and many times it's just we also communicate via message or email usually messenger so i know that if it's in the middle of the night they'll respond to me when they get up you know in the morning that's a good hack i didn't know that it's in the, the google calendar because i have it on my phone i actually added times to, i can have more time zones on my phone so i can see the uh, my assistant time zones as well which is handy, but I didn't know that it's in Google Calendar as well. So that's something. It's, like, it's like, you know, you can add sections of different information and that's one of the sections that you can add as your time zones. Okay, so I'm gonna okay, definitely I have, check it out. Yeah, I have like Brisbane, United Kingdom, the Philippines, you know, everything on there, so yes. Okay, great, that's, that's, that's a good hack, thank you. Um, so, so many things are going on, being business strategies, dealing with nutrition and a lot of teams, but how do you personally stay effective during the day? Well, as you know, my background is also health and fitness. So for me, it's very important that I do my morning workouts and having a morning routine. So what works best for me is I, I work best when I work out in the morning. I have some kind of activity, whether it is going for a walk or a hike, or doing a, you know, a workout or whatever. Now, in the past, um, pre-COVID, uh, we belong to a beautiful gym here. I live in Las Vegas. And so my, I love going there. It's my favorite, it was my getaway. I would go in the morning, do my thing, get away, come home and I'm refreshed and I go. Obviously that's not happening right now. And so uh, we haven't been to the actual gym since March. So we have a home gym. We actually took one of our bedrooms and we turned it into a home gym. Um, it's something, it's just very interesting because I was never good at using it before, right? It was interesting. We had it, but I very rarely ever used it because I liked to get away, right? I like to go and not have the phone ring and things like that. But I've learned I had to adapt, right? I adapted. And so it's very important for me. For me, when I work out of some kind of activity, it doesn't have to be, you know, whether I spin or whatever I do, work out or go for a walk, it's about getting the blood flowing, getting the mind going, and I listen to podcasts. So in the past, again, I used to listen to music. I don't do that anymore, so I multitask. So I listen to either personal development or business or marketing podcasts while I'm working out. Because what it does is it gets me thinking, it gets my brain thinking of new ways to do things. And so this is, you know, one, it gets the blood flowing, it gets everything flowing. And I have kind of a, an interesting setup. So in our home gym, I have one entire wall, we have a big whiteboard on the wall, okay? And so when I'm working out, I literally get ideas and I grab a pen and I write them up on the whiteboard. No, you don't. I do, and I'm telling you, it's amazing because if I don't write it down, I'll forget it. Yeah, 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 sure. Right? So it works out so well. So we have this big whiteboard and I just put my ideas on there. And then when I get done, I either take a picture of it or go write it down somewhere else. And then I can, boom, move on with my day. So that's a, again, if you guys have it available, I'm recommending have something. It doesn't have to be the whole wall, but you can get a little portable whiteboard and stick it up somewhere so you can jot the stuff down well worst case scenario pen and paper next to you but yes it completely makes sense so that that's one of my little inside tricks that keeps me very motivated and keeps the ideas moving for me um because i'm always you know i like to think outside the box and and yeah. you know approach things a little differently we already talked about uh, outsourcing but what can save tons of time is automation do you use any automated process Lots of automation. I automate anything that I can. <laughs> anything so that I can. Uh, I mean, obviously, I am. Um, well, this is interesting. Both my husband and I are total computer geeks. Like, we love software. We, I love any kind of software. So, um, and so, sometimes it gets me sidetracked. But so automating processes is very, very important. Automating systems. So we automate everything from obviously like our email, the basics, the email sequences. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't care what email service provider you use. I mean, I make recommendations based upon where people are in their business 
You know, some are very advanced, some are great for beginners. Um, but having an, at the very minimum, what we call an ESP, an email service provider, or what I also call a CRM, customer relationship management, okay? okay. Very minimum, that manages your list, it manages your database, and it allows you to create conversations mm -hmm. with people on your list where you write at one time and it works for you over and over. And I'm gonna give you an example. When we first started 15, 17 years ago, 17 years ago, um, with when we, we were creating our nutrition certification, um, we wanted to have a whole process as they were going through this. It was an online study program, right? Long before it's day. And so we wanted to make sure we, we were following them and moving them, engaging with them along the process. So one weekend, my husband and I were in Los Angeles and we booked an extra day to stay at the hotel. And we literally sat down and in a Word document, we wrote a series of emails. We literally just like wrote it like a story right? The welcome email, what happens next, the next, the next, right? And we just sat down together and just sort of mapped out this whole process. So at the time, I think we started, and again, most, most of my clients I have start with five emails, right? just a five basic email sequence just to get people going. But that weekend we did about 30. Right? We just wanted to map this all out. Every day they got an email, moving them through the process. Mm -hmm. Now, since then, now we wrote that 17 years ago, we still use that, the bones of that same email sequence. It's now um, a four month email sequence. And we've obviously gone back and updated it over the years, right? We update it and make sure it's more current and whatever, but we literally wrote that 17 years ago and that still continues and it communicates and it's just our, our personal communication. That's automation, you guys, at the ultimate. Right, because we you know, technically wrote it once. I mean, we've updated it, but we wrote it once and it works for us over and over and over again. And people still write back to us like as if we were writing to them personally, right? They do because we personalize it, right? It has an ability to put their name in there and different information pieces. It's all automated. So that's the most simple concept. If, if any of you are just starting out, that's the, the best place to start with automation. Okay. Wow. That's a good story. It's a really good story. 17 years old email still working perfectly today. And it was a very good investment to book this hotel room. <laughs> and that's just one thing that we do. I mean, we automate so many different components in our business. Mm -hmm. um, but understanding that automation does not have to be disconnected, right? We still keep it very engaging. We still keep it very personal. And that's that's a beautiful thing with technology today is you have the ability to still make these automated processes personal. That's very important because a lot of uh, businesses, especially those who are relying on services, who are service-based businesses, are kind of reluctant to do the automation part, outsourcing part, even because they want to feel the personal element. But it's good that you can get along with it and, and put the personal element, even the automated service, and then I assume when your clients write you, then you can step into a more personal conversation if it Absolutely. is needed, so that's brilliant. Absolutely right. So when they write back, then it comes to us personally, and then we take it on an individual basis. Great. Lisa, do you work on something exciting project right now? Is there anything in the pipeline? There is. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, yes, actually there is. It's, it's a very exciting time for us right now. Um, so we have, for the last nine years, we have been hosting a live conference. Um, so again, we are business growth strategists for health and wellness professionals. That's who we work with. So everything from, you know, fitness professionals, doctors, you know, naturopaths, gym owners, like we work with people who are in the health and wellness industry. And so we do an industry conference every year, um, either in November or December. And so we have our next one coming up, but this is what's very exciting for us. We've always done this live here in Las Vegas. It's been, a, you know, people love coming to Las Vegas yeah. and it's been a great event, but this year's different, right? This year's really different. And so we're not going to be doing a live event. We're, we're actually modifying our event and it's going to be a virtual live event. And we're actually calling it a virtual live experience. We want it to be very experiential and interactive. 
and we're working with an incredible team um, doing something really similar to what like uh, Tony Robbins just recently did for UPW. So Tony Robbins um, did this huge event. Ours isn't that big, but huge event, like 16,000 people uh, all live on the internet for three days, you know, and, and it was very, very interactive. So we're modeling his process um, and doing it our, our same uh, uh, annual conference, but this is a teaching conference. This is not a pitch-a-thon. We don't have 30 different speakers pitching their stuff. We don't do that. This is a teaching conference where we dive in and work on your business. So it's an interactive business training for health and wellness professionals. And so it's really exciting because we're just now ramping up for it. Um, we're going to have a series of live webinars or web classes that we're going to be teaching in October to, to help people understand about, you know, the three key areas of their business and then inviting them to come to the, the virtual experience. <laughs> so it's exciting. Organizing such an event is the paradise for a software geek as you and your <laughs> husband are. <laughs> you know, so yes, I, I love this stuff. I actually, I love our conference. But it's my actually favorite thing that we do because we're so interactive with each of the businesses. Like I, I'm, I, I love strategy. I love sitting down and like really mapping out and strategizing a business. And this conference gives us that opportunity to do it with all these different businesses. And so, um, yes, we love, you know, it's going to be so different this year. I mean, I'm, we've never done a virtual conference. We do a lot of virtual events. Uh, you know, we do things virtually, you know, with Zoom. Um, we have been for years. Um, but to actually pull this off as a full interactive, you know, experience, uh, we're working with an incredible team. We have a team on board now who this is their, their background. And so literally we're going to be in a, in a studio. We're going to a studio. It's five minutes from our house and we're going to have like big screens. And so we're going to be able to see everybody just like I see you and interact with everybody and have it very engaging and, and, you know, learning. And anyway, I'm excited about it. <laughs> it's obvious you are excited about it, but it sounds really, really exciting. So I wish you all the best. And if any health professionals are listening to ask, I'm going to definitely uh, leave the link in my show notes. So please make sure to forward it to me so they can find you as well. Absolutely. I will do Now I do have some, I have a freebie for your people. I have a gift. Um, wow. I have a gift as well. I always love to share a gift of some type. Is that, is that okay? Of course. Yes, please go ahead. Oh, okay. So I just recently um, released uh, a, a, a new ebook um, because this entire month of September, I'm, um, I'm teaching on dealing, how do you deal with stress as a business owner? Because there's so much going on in this world. There's so much happening. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, business owners and entrepreneurs have processes and ways to be able to handle what is, what's going on. How do you do that and still run your business? And so I just released, I just, I'll show you my printout, but I just released this ebook called Unplug 24 Unplug. Techniques um, to Beat Stress. And I'm going to give you the link so that you can share it with your listeners. I, I invite you guys to download it. It is absolutely free. I have three breathing techniques in there. I have some mindset techniques in there. You know, just processes that you guys can easily do to, you know, when, it's, when things get to be too much, when you start to feel overwhelmed, when you start to feel like, you know, how do I handle all of this? This is a, a really um, easy process and you guys can print it out and go through the different uh, techniques I have in there. Thank you. Thank you. I definitely going to look into that. And guys, also check out the link below this video and make sure to use some because stress can really, really beat us, especially as business owners. And I love you said processes because that's so important to me. I'm Jofia of my processes because I really believe in processes. You really have to have your processes in place in order to be efficient, not to waste time and to create something, some money, generate some money out of whatever you are doing. That's, that's really important. Absolutely. I mean, that's why Sophia is so important for your listeners. You guys look, at, you know, pay attention to what she is sharing. It is, it's, it's so imperative that you have support, that you have a team supporting you and that you are not doing it all by yourself. Because when you start thinking that you, you're going to, you have to do all of these things yourself, it is, 
the value of having a team and the value of having uh, the support from someone like Sophia and what she offers is, is so much more than your time. Okay. And so I really encourage you, please follow, you know, make sure that you're looking at what she has to offer. It is absolutely critical as an entrepreneur and as a business owner that you have the right support behind you. And as listeners of her show, um, you know, I just encourage you to please stay connected with what she's sharing with you and, and what she's offering. It is, it is an absolute key piece. You cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. It always takes a team. It takes a village. Thanks a bit. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much for these words and thank you for this summary of perfect summary of what I am doing. And I'm really, really happy you shared your story with us with all this outsourcing automation experience with all your, your 17 years of business experience, which is extremely important. And you showed us that you have managed to switch to uh, remote working even way before COVID. That's that's also a very, very important lesson to learn from this. So do you have any final notes for, for us? Um, no, I mean, I would just, uh, again, reiterate that uh, understanding, obviously you're listening to the show, right? You're listening, you're, you're out, you're here to learn how can you do better in your business. And again, do what, focus on what you do best. Focus on your area of expertise, right? Focus on your, your sweet spot and have your team to support you in doing that. That's, the most important thing that you can do to be best and to serve your clients at the best level. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much.